one of the reasons I set it up this way was because I knew that the yellows are colors that get dirty really easily. I'm celebrating World Watercolor Month with a new video every day in July. Hi, Angela Fair here. I'm filling my palette today, getting ready for a trip to Italy to paint plein air. And I wanted to show you how I set up a palette when I don't have a color wheel method to do. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is my studio palette. And as you can see, it's full of juicy, delicious color, except for that one ran away. And uh, how I filled this uh, palette with 64 colors, and it's made by Robax, R-O-B-A-X dot com. Um, when I filled this the first time, I used a color wheel to help me know where to place my colors. So I put it uh, in the center of my palette, and then you can see the reds and pinks went here, shifting over to violet, blue, green, yellow, etc. Um, the challenge here, the only thing that was difficult was finding a place to put my browns and my neutrals, and they ended up kind of going in this space over here by the, by the orange and uh, the rusty colors but uh you know it was really a great method when you have a round palette to use a color wheel to fill it so what do you do when your palette isn't round and i wanted to show you how i'm setting up my palette today so this is my rectangular palette it's a fusion 18 leaked leak proof airtight paint palette and i'm excited to have one that is leak proof for travel and um, i've already filled it it's eight, it holds 18 colors, and I want to show you why I filled it in the way that I did. And in order to do that, we have to backtrack about 26 years to when I first started painting. And when I first started painting, I was using a rectangular palette, this guy right here. So nostalgic to look at it and think of the many, many years that I used this palette. And uh, probably, I think it was 20 for sure. And, uh, you know, I just kept filling it in the same color order as I'd started. On the left hand side over here, you can see the yellows shifting over. Well, actually, there's some random greens kind of there and then back to yellow. And then we had greens and violet, um, blues kind of under my thumb here, um, and reds and oranges up in the top corner. And one of the reasons I set it up this way was because I knew that the yellows are colors that get dirty really easily. And so the, the most important thing I felt like with a palette like this is not getting those yellows dirty, keeping them away from colors that might contaminate them. So I've put them on their own side in the palette and then I've just gradually <laughs> switched over into orange, um, then my red and pink. Uh, and I'm just going to walk you through the different colors that I have here. So I chose these colors based on the colors in my Daniel Smith dot card. A couple of years ago, Daniel Smith asked me to choose 18 of my favorite of their pigments uh, to have on my very own dot card. And this just shows a look at those colors that I've chosen. If you are lucky, shopping at a local art supply store, um, you might stumble across one of these as a gift to you when you buy your Daniel Smith paints. They have palettes by many very amazing artists uh, and they're all different ranges of colors. It gives you a look at some different colors that are made by Daniel Smith, ones that you maybe haven't tried yourself. And these are ones that I love and use almost every day. Um, yeah, most of the colors in this palette I use on the daily. Um, so what I did in order to help me set up my palette was I took my Daniel Smith dot card. I knew those were the colors I wanted to bring with me to Italy and I cut it up. So you can see all these little squares here. And then I ordered them into families. And um, in order to decide where in the palette they went, um, I put all the yellows together. Um, then I put the oranges and the colors I considered to be like an orange together. Um, the reds and pinks went together, etc. And once they were in their color families, uh, then I could start moving them around and placing them in the palette. Again, I started with my yellows. And because I wanted to keep them clean, so they went in the upper corner. Mars yellow, um, it's kind of an opaque yellow, a little bit buttery. Nicolazo yellow is a more coppery, warm yellow. And Aussie red gold is a beautiful orangey golden color. So I consider all of those yellows <laughs> verging onto orange. Uh, Venetian red, it's called a red, but I love the beautiful shade of pink it creates. Quinacridone sienna is an amazing um, rich burnt orange. Um, Carmine is my red and it's not a true red, it's kind of a cherry red. And if I wanted a more um, tomatoey red, I could add a little bit of yellow to it. 
Um, then we have Opera Pink, and unfortunately that one's on order right now. I didn't have a fresh tube of Opera Pink to put in my palette today, so I've made a shopping list. And uh, the Opera Pink is a beautiful, fun, clear pink, so that will be going in there. Um, next is Cobalt Violet Deep. Cobalt Violet Deep is a gorgeous, um, just a beautiful reddish violet, and it granulates beautifully. It has a beautiful texture as it dries. Um, Rose of Ultramarine is another textural color that I love. It's a blue and a, and a pink together, um, quinacridone rose and ultramarine blue um, in combination to make this mixed pigment. And I love the way they separate as they dry. It's kind of a plummy color. Um, and a little bit, a little bit muddy. It's not, you know, neon bright um, or kind of like a magenta. Uh, lavender is one of my favorite colors for skies, for mixing, for neutrals, for pops of, for mixing neutrals, I should say, and for pops of opaque color at the end of a painting. So I had to include that in there. Cobalt Teal Blue is next, another favorite color, um, gorgeous for those pops of beautiful color. Verdider Blue, I would consider this, and I'm going to just, there's a little fleck of cobalt teal in there. I'm going to scoop it out. Probably a palette knife would give me a little more control. There we go. Um, so the Verdider Blue, I would consider my true blue. It's um, kind of a middle-of-the-road blue, and uh, I like it because it's a little lighter than cobalt and ultramarine, and it, it really makes beautiful watermarks for skies. Phthalo Turquoise is a fantastic transparent uh, turquoise blue, electric blue, <laughs> and it make, makes beautiful greens when mixed with yellow. Uh, can't wait to use that color. Green Gold is almost a yellow as well. It's so beautifully transparent when diluted, um, and it makes beautiful greens. Uh, and you can mix it with the Thalo Turquoise, that's why I've put them side by side, to make rich greens, rich vibrant greens. Um, next in the corner we have an empty spot. Again, another color on order. This is Zoocyte Genuine, so I've stuck it here to remind me to order it. And uh, I would call that a gray-green. It's very dark, um, and it looks like a gray-green when, and, and then when you dilute it, it's just, I don't know, it's just beautiful. Uh, and it's one of Daniel Smith's Primatech colors. We have then uh, Sodalite Genuine, which is very similar to Indigo uh, when it goes down on the paper. But as it dries, um, the Primatech minerals in there uh, and create some texture. There's a beautiful blue, um, cobalt blue undertone in the color, and it lightens up a bit. And I'm just in love with the texture of it. Um, and actually, all four of the colors on the end here are sedimentary or textural colors. Uh, Moon Glow is uh, going to go in this space, and it's a rich, murky violet, um, very beautiful and dark. Kind of plummy as well and hematite burnt scarlet genuine is a reddish brown you notice i don't have any actual browns in my palette i don't have any burnt umber or ross um, or burnt sienna or anything like that i can mix a lot of neutrals using the beautiful pure colors in this palette and i'm excited to take it with me to italy and uh, really put this palette through its paces and have some fun with my 18 daniel smith colors uh, once again, those Daniel Smith colors, uh, the Daniel Smith watercolor um, dot card cannot be ordered. Um, it's really a, kind of a, a, I don't know, a Pokemon search to try to find it, and that's okay. Uh, I do, uh, you can, however, read the list of the colors down in the description below the video uh, and order your own. And if you have your own colors that you'd like to put in a palette and you're not sure what order to put them in, um, try this method. Make a little swatch of those colors. Um, you know, have those little swatch cards that you can move or shuffle around uh, so that you can put the colors in the order that you'd like. I really like the way my darks are going to be all on this side. Um, you know, those lighter, um, warmer colors are over here, and then we slowly shift over as well to cooler colors. Green gold is kind of an exception there, um, but I, like I said, I do have a strategy for the reason it's there, and I'm happy with it. So um, there's not a wrong way to fill your palette. Don't feel stressed about that. Um, really, the goal here is always um, putting your color in your palette so you can use it. You want to have fun using your paints. Uh, you want to play and you want to be able to paint easily. And so whatever helps you paint more easily, that's the strategy you should use as you think about how to fill your palette. Um, just fill it and then go use those colors. 
Bye for now. Happy painting. Bye. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with more watercolor advice you can learn from. Don't forget to include the hashtag World Watercolor Month when you participate and post watercolor art in July.